Hello, everyone. Welcome again to our OpenCV and Python implementation series. And the idea behind today's um, video lecture is basically to go over more of um, applications for how we can use what we've learned so far to do some interesting things. What we're going to take a look at right now is actually doing uh, Voronoi diagrams. Those, uh, if you look them up on Wikipedia, look like this. And the idea is that we're actually not going to create exactly this. We're going to be creating cellular textures that are based upon this form of basically determining how far away every pixel is from its closest point and then partitioning space up based upon that information. This is how they're showing it, where you can see they've selected a spot. And then as they iterate through every single pixel, well, let's actually look at a better example here. So the idea is that let's say we choose two spots. We'll say there are two areas where there a cell exists. So maybe like right there, and then we'll pick another one. Let's cho choose a different color here. Maybe like this blue and right there. What we end up doing is we iterate over all of the pixels inside of our image and we find which one is closest. And then we store the distance to that object right here. So let's just say we're iterating through our pixels and we check this point and we see that the value is, let's just say one, two, three, and I don't know, one, two, three, let's just say 3.1, something like that. And then we go to this one. So this is one, two, three, and that one's three. Actually, this would be less than three, wouldn't it? This is a bad example already. Let's say this is two. So it's two to this one right here. So what ends up happening is we store that value, the shortest distance to a point inside of here. And then we would do the same thing over here. Let's say it's like 1.5 and then we're one unit away and then 1.5 again. And you keep doing this through every single part. And what ends up happening is you end up with this really cool thing where you end up with um, a gradient starting from black. So this would be zero because it's right there. And this would also be zero here. And as you go further out from it, you end up with colors that are more white. So as you get to these areas right between you know, the midpoint between two of these uh, points here, you end up with a value that's very, very close to, uh, well, the highest value you'll get, which will be something that when you map it over will be one. So what you'll have to do is after you've calculated all these different things, you're then going to have to find the maximum value and then divide everything by that to renormalize everything going on. So anyway, why don't we go ahead and create this? It's really simple and easy, and it won't take very long for us to do that at all. And it's just another cool example of how we can generate our own kind of textures using some very simple knowledge inside of OpenCV and NumPy. All right, so the first thing, as always, is we need to do some imports. So let's go ahead and do import CV2. And then we also need to import NumPy as NP. And then we're going to import random because we're going to randomly figure out where each of those points should be. So this point and this point are randomly placed throughout our image. You could place them manually if you wanted to, but you know, half the idea here is that you're creating a, a cellular structure at random. So that's kind of why we're using it. And finally, import math because we're going to need a couple functions inside of math to do calculations like our distance checking. Now, the first thing we want to do is determine how many number of cells we're going to have. So let's do number of cells is going to be equal to, and let's just do something simple, 10 for now. And now what we need to do is create a blank image, an image of nothing but zeros. So let's go ahead and do image. It's going to be equal to np.zeros. And we're going to specify first is our tuple of our width and our height, and then the uh, number of channels, which will be one in our case, we're doing black and white. And then finally, we're going to do np.float because we're going to be dealing with distances and distance values are going to be floating point values for us. At the end of everything, we're going to convert everything back over to integers so we can actually visualize these things. But for right now, they're all going to need to be floats. Now that we have the number of cells and we have an image, we're going to need to actually create the random cell positions, the random cell points. So we're going to do a 4i in range, and we're going to go from 0 to the number of cells. There we go. And what we want to do is each time we iterate over it, we're going to grab a new, um, basically a new random x and y coordinate. But first we need some place to store that, so we're going to do cells is going to be equal to an empty list. There we go. And then what we want to do is cells.append. And what we're going to append inside of that is basically the following. It's going to be two things. It's going to be a tuple of two parts, the x and y coordinate. So the first one is going to be random dot 
rand int because we want a random integer value that is a random pixel value, uh, the pixel location that we're going to be choosing. And that's going to be from zero, of course, the start of everything to the shape or the size, I should say, of our image, which is shape zero for rows. And then the next one is going to be random dot rand int zero image dot shape. And that's going to be the column part of it or element one. Now that we have all of our cells, which is good. Let's let's make sure we have our cells. Let's do a print first and we'll print out those cells and we'll hit run to make sure everything's working. And there we go, we have all of our different cells, uh, each of the different random pixel locations where this is actually going to have a cell start. Now what we need to do is actually take a minute and create two functions that are going to help us out. What we need to do now is iterate through every single pixel in our image. So actually we should do that first. Let's Let's create that for loop really fast. So let's do for row in range, and that's going to be image.shape0, so over all of those elements, and then for C column in range, image.shape1, great. Now what we need to do is checking, uh, we need to do basically a distance calculation. We need to check the distance from every single cell we have to our current pixel, Find the shortest one and store that distance inside of the image. You know, it would help if that was a four, wouldn't it? We're going to make four functions to make this easy for us. So let's just go ahead and do that up at the top. So the first function is going to be our distance. So let's go ahead and do def distance. And that's going to take in a first position and a second position. And what those are going to be are simply tuples of X and Y pairs. What we're going to do is return a math dot square root and this is just the Euclidean distance formula. You can look this one up if you're not familiar with it, but basically it's uh, x1 minus x0. You raise that to the square, and then you add that to y1 minus y0 and square that as well. And then you take the square root of the entire term to find the distance. So let's do that. We'll do, let's see, there's this one. So we're gonna do p1 element zero minus p0 element zero. And what we actually want to do is multiply this thing by itself. By multiplying it by itself, it gets rid of any negatives that may pop up, which we don't want to subtract away. We actually want the negatives to add to the distance. That's why we square things. Anyway, let's go to the next part, and that's going to be plus, and we're going to grab the exact same thing we just did and paste it in here. And instead of it being element zero, it's going to be element one for each of these. So now we're dealing with the Y coordinates. And that will return to us our distance. Great. Now let's make a second function that uses that distance function to make our lives really easy to automatically iterate over every cell that we have and return the one that's the closest. So we're going to do a def check each cell. And we're going to pass in the point we're dealing with. That is the, the row and column of the pixel we're dealing with. And then finally, all of the cells that we're working with. And then we're going to do closest is just going to be equal to the distance function we just wrote. We're going to pass in P0, and then we're going to pass in the first cell. Great. And then what we're going to do is for cell in cells, we're going to iterate over every single one. And we're going to say our distance is going to be equal to, once again, our distance calculation. And we'll do P0 and cell. Now, this is wasting one iteration of this um, because we've already done the first iteration. If you want to, you can do a four uh, I in range instead. But, you know, I don't care. It's only one cell difference for each. For uh, Actually, you know, it does does add, actually amount to a lot. So maybe we should do four range instead. So let's do four I in range. And then the range we want to have is um, the length of cell. We're then going to iterate over each of the cells and use I to iterate over each one. And uh, actually this is not length. This is one comma len of cells because we're starting at one and we're going up to the end of it. There we go. And what we need to do is a check. If distance is less than our closest value that we calculated to begin with, well, then closest is going to be equal to dist. And then we're going to return closest when we're all finished. All right, now that we have that, we can move on and actually get things to work. So in our loop over every single pixel, 
we're going to say our value is equal to check each cell and we're going to pass into that our current row and our current column and we're going to pass in our list of cells. And now what we need to do is set in our image what that distance value actually is. So we'll do image dot item set and first we pass in our row, our column, and the channel we're dealing with, which is zero, and then we're gonna pass in value. All right, so why don't we do a test really quick and see that things are working okay. Let's uh, grab the max value. So we'll do max value is gonna be equal to numpy np dot a max, and then we're gonna do that over the entire image. And then we'll print out that maximum value, max value just to see if we're getting something that makes sense. Let's go ahead and hit run. We have a problem. Uh, let's go to this line. I did not spell range correctly, so that's an easy one to fix. Let's go ahead and clear this console. Hit run, and I spelled distance wrong. Wow, a lot of typos today. Hit run again, and there we go. We got a maximum distance of a 117 point something other. And not that I know exactly which value it is, but I'm getting something that makes sense. It's within the ranges of the size of the image. So I'm gonna assume that things are right for now. Whoops, I only wanna delete the print statements. So let's get rid of them. So now is the slightly trickier part, and that is where we need to actually iterate over every element of our uh, image and do some math on it to renormalize our range. Because right now we've got these big distance values, and according to the last time we ran it, those distances go up to 117 point some numbers. We need to divide every single uh, value in our image by that maximum value. And that's gonna make sure that everything we have is in the range of zero to one. Then we're gonna multiply all those values by 255 so that we take all those values and if the value is zero, guess what you get? You get a zero. If the value is one, you get the maximum value, which is 255. And that's exactly what we need inside of an integer or an unsigned integer of size eight to show images. So doing that, let's go ahead and do another four range with rows and columns. I'm just gonna copy this one up here. It's the same thing. So let's do temp is gonna be equal to uh, let's see, our image dot item. We're gonna grab the item value and that's gonna be our row and our column and zero. And then what we wanna do is divide that value that we get by our, let's see, we wanna divide that, that's right, right here, by our maximum value, which we, were, which we uh, got right here. And then next up, we want to multiply that by 255. So let's just see if we've got everything we need. Yep, that looks good to me. And now we can do image that item set, just like before. We'll do our row, our column, and the zeroth channel. And then we'll set in there our temp value. And that's it. Now all we need to do is actually convert from floating point values over to integer values so that we can display them using IM show. So our final image is going to be equal to the conversion using image dot as type and we specify the type in here, and that's gonna be numpy.unsigned int eight. Make sure you're using an unsigned integer eight. If you use a signed integer eight, you only get half the range because half of it's in negative and half of it's in positive, and your images are gonna do this weird thing where they go from black to white halfway, and then they'll clamp all of a sudden and roll back around to black again and then go back out to white. So make sure you don't make that mistake. I can tell you because I made that the first time and couldn't figure it out for a second. So let's do cv2.imshow, give it a name. Let's just call it final image. And then let's do the actual final image right there. And then let's do cv2.wait key and just put a zero in there. And then finally cv2.destroy all windows and we're good there. All right, now let's go ahead and hit run and see what happens. And here's our bad value and check it out. Here's our image with all this different cells. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different cells, as we can tell by the black dots. And each of them go out in uh, you know gradient towards the center point. You'll notice that the maximum distance becomes the main area that's the whitest, and everywhere else is more of a dull gray because the distances are much smaller. But you can keep run the, running this and getting more and more interesting kinds of things. If we want to, we can also increase the scale of this. So one thing we haven't done is it looks like we let's see, need to go, here we go. Let's make this, I don't know, let's do something stupid like 1024, something that'll take a little bit of time for it to calculate because we haven't really done anything to be efficient here. And let's say 50 of these cells. That's quite a lot of pixels to calculate. 
We'll hit run, and we'll give it just a few seconds and see what we get. And there we go. So we've got, what was that, 50 of these different cells uh, over a, 10, a 124 by 124 image. And of course, you can keep playing with this, and there are ways of optimizing this faster in terms of how you actually do the multiplication on each one. This is a simple implementation where we do iterate over all the different pixels, and we make changes uh, appropriately so you understand the entire algorithm and how it's supposed to work. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, kind of application of the knowledge you've learned so far. I really enjoy being able to generate and create these kind of weird different images. You can check out other ways of doing this. So instead of taking like the first distance, you can do the second, third, or fourth. And those generate far more interesting images in some ways. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. So long everyone and goodbye.